Chances are you clicked on this video with some visceral reaction to Star Citizen. To you, it's most likely either a complete scam that only morons would support, or you think it might be the defining game of a generation ushering in a new golden age for gaming. I think most of us fall somewhere in the middle and think, why can't it be both? But the real question that I see a lot of people asking is, why is everybody playing it right now? Well, for one, right now the game is free to play. They're doing a huge event in-game, and from now until May 29th, the game is free to hop in and experience what the verse has to offer. If you're interested in hopping in, you can use my referral code, which will be on screen to get some extra in-game money that will be permanently added to your account if you end up buying the game. Now, if you don't know what Star Citizen is, this video will definitely not be a comprehensive deep dive into the game's history, its many blunders, and successes. But the TLDR is that Star Citizen wants to be the everything space game. Full-scale planets, no loading screens, multiple star systems, AAA graphics with a persistent shared universe. It wants to be the defining spaceship and dogfighting experience while also maintaining a AAA level FPS experience. It's supposed to be an MMO with a dynamic economy, professions, crafting, base building, and well, the list just really keeps going. They quickly realized that that game was technically impossible to make, and so for the past 12-ish years, the devs have been working on inventing the tech that they need to make that game a reality, and also working on the bespoke single-player game that will live alongside the MMO called Squadron 42. Oh, and while they've been doing that, they've been raising more money than God to fund the game by selling JPEGs of ships to the players that maybe one day our grandkids will fly if they live long enough. Now, I am not here to tell you what you should think about Star Citizen or if you should buy the game. I personally know people who have gotten hundreds or even thousands of hours of fun with just the $45 base package, and I know people that have spent thousands of dollars on the game and left and don't plan on coming back. But the question still stands. If the game has been playable for the better part of a decade now, why have so many people taken an interest in it recently? Well, I think one of the simple answers is a lot of people have been keeping their eye on this game for a long time in the background. As of now, over 5 million people have backed this game, and the average concurrent player base ain't even in that hemisphere. Sure, a lot of those players may never come back, but a lot of the people that backed the game knew it was going to be a long-term project, and so they come back when there are major updates. For example, I backed the game in 2018, but I maybe check it out two or three times a year when there's a big patch, and then put it down and wait for some more progress. And recently, there has been some of that progress. A huge reason we are seeing a spike in interest is due to the recent major patch that came to the game. Now, back when I said that this game has been playable for the better part of a decade, that is really giving it some grace. This game makes my main game, Escape from Tarkov, look like the first real quadruple A game. Star Citizen has been plagued with bugs, crashes, and issues its entire existence. There have been patches where a large population of the player base were completely unable to even log into the game for weeks at a time. This is a game where there is fun to be had for sure, but you are going to spend most of your time fighting the game to make that happen. However, the recent 3.23 patch saw a whole host of quality of life features and included long overdue updates to many of the in-game systems that caused a lot of frustration. This was kind of a double whammy of fixing some of the frustrating issues while also updating a lot of the UI to be cleaner and more intuitive. It also included support for some upscaling technologies like DLSS and FSR, which have helped a lot of people actually get usable frame rates. Stability in general seems to have improved a lot in this patch, and with the new replication layer tech that we'll talk about in a minute here, server crashes are at least a little bit less irritating. Now, when I say stability has improved, I don't mean there are less bugs, just that those bugs are more inconveniences now, and less often are they completely game-breaking things that stop your play session in its tracks. This patch brought a bunch of other smaller things too, like new locations to visit, a new character customizer, and a pretty big rebalancing of a lot of the FPS combat. Outside of the recent patch, however, the other big part of the rising interest in Star Citizen is the general shift towards it becoming an actual game. For example, they made some pretty big waves a while back showing off what their game engine could do. Like I said earlier, a big blocker of the development of this game is just their desire to do things that no game has done before. 
and for better or for worse, they have spent a considerable amount of time and energy basically creating their own game engine to accommodate what they want to do. At their most recent yearly convention event called CitizenCon, they showed off a trailer for their Star Engine, showing off the work that they had been doing and what their engine is capable of. There are a ton of features in that video that all seem to be integral parts of the experience that they want to create in a game like this, and it seems like they might be closing in on executing on some of them. Even though all those things are cool, the biggest and most important tech hurdle for the game is server meshing, and it seems like that might be ready for testing by the end of this year. The next major version of Star Citizen, Alpha 4.0, is slated to come out in Q3 this year. Now, we know that's probably not going to happen, but hopefully soon after that. And in it will be the first implementation of server meshing. Now, I am no network engineer, and this video is not a deep dive into technologies that I don't understand. But at a high level, server meshing allows them to split the game up into different servers that each store some of the information about the world and interact with each other seamlessly. Right now, the game servers hold 100 players, and in that game instance, every item, every ship, every person on every planet and every moon is held on that one server, which is a huge reason that the game is sluggish and unstable. Server meshing allows them to split up that load between multiple servers that interact with each other so that functionally you notice no difference, but the backend can be much more efficient. Many other games have used server meshing before, but those haven't been first-person games at this level of fidelity with servers that will hopefully be running at 20 to 30 tick rate. And there is even more that they want to do in the future with dynamic server meshing, but that is way far off. Their replication layer tech is also a part of this as well, and as I understand it, that basically saves a copy of the information on every server so that if a server goes down, it can essentially pause the game, spool up another server, and then place all of that info onto the new one so that you can resume your play session. Server meshing arriving will undoubtedly be a buggy experience that will take a while to iron out, but it is probably the most important piece of tech coming to the game. 4.0 will also finally bring the second star system to the game named Pyro. This will mark a new chapter in the game's history, since for the entire time the game has been playable, there has only been the one system, and they literally have hundreds planned to come to the game. Pyro will be a completely lawless system, which opens up a ton of new gameplay opportunity. Finally, another reason people are getting excited is because the devs themselves are finally talking about turning this into an actual game. Richard Tyre, who is the senior game director for Star Citizen and Squadron 42, recently had this to say. I want it to be a cohesive experience that is all tied together, and I want to get there as soon as possible. I want somebody to be able to play the game and understand all the things that they have available to them, and I want that to be a, a a good onboarding experience and then to have thousands of hours of gameplay and content for people to be able to play. Now don't get me wrong, we have a lot of gameplay already in the game, but it's in isolated pockets. It's like if you wanted to be a miner, great, you can go and do mining, you can do that loop. But I want I want the connections. I want the interwebbing. That's the difference between features and content and a game. And I wanna I wanna push towards that as as quickly as possible. This really is a great description of it. Yes, the game has a ton of tech hurdles it needs to jump over, but additionally, it just needs to actually function like a video game and not like a tech demo. Between communication like this and also recent mentions from the devs about things like crafting, base building, and the economy team balancing the game, people are cautiously optimistic about the future. It is important to remember though that this is a company that has said a lot of things and more often than not failed to deliver on those promises. So I wouldn't quite take them at their word. These next few patches will definitely show if the game is moving in this direction or not. Ultimately, I think that on some level people see the potential of this game and maybe we are finally starting to see some of the light at the end of the tunnel which has garnered enough interest for even some of the largest streamers to check it out. Some of those people are having an amazing experience and some of those people, not so much. I, I feel like, like the community has been sometimes brainwashed. Or I, some things work. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brainwashed, manipulation, what is okay. happening? Um, this isn't real. We're in a there should be a study spot, on this. We're not this is fucking current, crazy. So we'll probably just there needs here. to be a guys, study uh, on this. What is up. happening? Judd. Can we just can we just kill ourselves? I understand the game, and I actually think I could like it if it wasn't so bad, right? Like, I think I could actually like that game. This has definitely been one of those projects where there is always something huge right around the corner. There's always a Jesus patch that will come out next year and fix everything. And so I don't want to sound like I am preaching the gospel of Star Citizen here. None of these things might happen, or more likely they will happen, but much slower than we want them to. But I want to know what you think. 
Are you a backer that's getting excited to hop back into Star Citizen? Are you someone that's seeing it for the first time thinking about trying it out? Or do you think that this game is a scam that will never release? Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. If you liked the video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I do stream on Twitch and here on YouTube. All my links will be down below if you want to come by and say hey. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.